Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this one we are not going to do something new with CMake that we haven't done before but we will be using a set of different tools to configure and generate our CMake projects. And I want you to see a few GUI tools that people use. There is CMake GUI if you are on Windows. If you are on Linux or Mac you can use CC Make. And I went through the trouble to make this video because I want you to see that there are three steps that CMake goes through to build your project. There is a configuration stage, there is a generation stage, there is a build stage. And why is this important? They are important because some behaviors of CMake or some aspects of CMake pertain to each of these phases. They are going to tell you this variable is going to do this in the configuration stage. It is going to do a different thing in the generation stage. So be mindful of these steps. In my early days using CMake, this was really confusing to me because I used it on the command line. And if you are on the terminal and pass the generator that you want to use and point CMake to the location of the CMake list.txt file, it is going to do the first two steps in one go. So you're not going to see the configuration stage, you're not going to see the generation stage, you will see a build system generated and all you need to do is to build through that build system. GUI tools are going to make these steps visible, but there are other benefits of using these GUI tools. I am going to show you how to use them here and you will make your own decision. Let's hop over to a terminal for Windows. So let's go to CD here and do LS. And this is the project we did in the last lecture, episode 18, where we talked about using the basic constructs in a project setting. We will be reusing the same project here to show you how to use these GUI tools. Before you use them, make sure you have set up your build directory because the first thing you have to know is the location of your source code. In this case, it is where we are here, the location of the CMake list.txt file. But you also need to know the location of your build directory. So let's create it. You can say mkdr. Again, we are on Windows. So let's do build. Uh, it's not web though. So let's remove this and say, okay, we remove it and we mkdr. Make sure to type build directory. Now we have a build directory. Now that we have these directories here, we can call the CMake GUI tool. You can go through the start menu and find it, but I find it easier to just call this on the terminal. So CMake GUI, just like this. If you do, it is going to come up. And I have it here because it was installed as a part of my CMake install. So if you don't have it installed, do a little search online and you will see how to install this bad boy here. Now, it is going to ask you two things. It is going to ask you, where is the source code? You need to click on this button and point it to the location of the main CMake list that txt file of your project. In this case, we will go into episode 18 because that's our thing here. And this is the folder containing the main CMake list that txt file of our project here. Again, it is going to ask you, where should I build the binaries? Well, you need to point it to your build directory. So let's go to episode 18 and point to the build directory here. Now that you have done this, if you look down, you see that we have two buttons. We have a configure button and we have a generate button. And you guessed it. If you want to configure your project, hit configure. If you want to generate a build system, hit generate. Hitting configure is going to tell CMake to read all your CMake lists.txt files and build an in-memory map of your project. And uh, after the configuration stage, no build system will have been generated. CMake will just have the information about your project in memory, in the RAM of your computer. This is something you need to understand. Let's hit configure and see what happens. It is going to ask us the generator that we want to use. It's not going to pick one by default. I am happy with Ninja. If you want, you can pick another. You see on Windows, I have a bunch of options, but I am going to stick to Ninja here. If I hit finish, it is going to configure my project. Notice what happens. After the configuration stage, our variables are going to be set up and we will be printing things from our message commands this is something you need to know. Another thing you should see is that our cache variables have been generated. And if you go in here, 
and look for the sky is blue, you see we have a cache variable here. In the configuration stage, our message are going to be printed and our cache variables are going to be set up. And indeed, if you go in your project and go in the build directory, you see a CMake cache file generated, but we are still in the configure stage. We just did the configure stage and we haven't generated a build system yet. If you go back to the build directory, you see that we have no ninja file. So our build system hasn't been generated yet. Once you are happy with the configuration, you can hit generate and this is going to generate your build system. Before we do that, make sure to look at these buttons. For example, if you do to grouped, it's going to group your properties in some ways. If we take this out, it's going to show you everything. If you untick advanced, it's going to show you basic variables. Please look at this, see how you can use this in your project. I really use this a lot if I want to shift the cache variables that are available to me. So I fire up this GUI tool a lot, look at the variables that I have, and then I decide if I want to use these variables in my CMEC project. But please make sure you find your own way to make use of this tool here. Once you are happy with the configuration, hit generate. This is going to say generating done. And after you do this, this tool is done. Now you can hop over to your terminal again and uh, hop over to the build directory, cd build. And you see that a build system has been generated. You see we have our ninja file. If we want, we can say ninja, I think, to build. It's going to build our executable. If you want it, you can use CMake build to build your project. It's going to do the same. And if you run it, it is going to say whatever it is programmed to do. This is basically how you use the CMake GUI tool to both configure and generate a build system. We can do the same on Linux, but before we do that, let's clean up what we did before. We can go up and remove the build directory. Build, let's remove that. Remove our build, cd up, remove our build, and it is going to go away. Now our project is clean again. We can hop over to my Linux container, which is pointing to the same directory as our project of interest here. If we do ls, we're going to see our things, but on Linux, the tool we use is CC Make. I think it is the same tool you have on a Mac. Don't quote me on that. I am not a Mac user, but I heard some people are using this tool on a Mac, so you may have access to it. Before you use it, make sure you have it installed on your Linux system. I am using Ubuntu to install it on Ubuntu. This is the command CMake Curses GUI. You need to install this using the APT package manager. Once you have access to it, let's hop over back to our terminal. Once you have access to it, you can say CC make help and it is going to give you the help you need. And uh, to call it, you need to give it the location of the sources and the location of your build directory. Let's create a build directory pretty fast. So C M K D O R build C D to build, or we don't even need to go there. So we can say CC make S. The location of the sources is where we are here. So we pass it out and we specify the build directory to be build. And if we do that, you see a user interface is going to show up in our terminal. If you go down, you see that we have a bunch of options. We can show log output, we can call the help, we can toggle advanced mode, but what we want is to configure. So let's hit C. This is going to configure using the default build system on Linux. It is going to be using make files. That's what I believe. And you see that configuring is done. Once the configuration is done, you can hit E to exit. Let's see what we can do. We can toggle advanced. Let's toggle advanced. And if we do that by hitting T, it is going to show all the variables. So you can really move through these variables and see what you have. If you go all the way to the bottom, you will see the sky is blue, which is yes. This is really cool. If you want to toggle again, advanced mode, hit T again, you will see the basic mode. Now we want to generate, but one thing I have seen with this tool is that to see the generation option, you have to configure again. So let's hit C again and hit E to exit. Now we have the generation option. If you hit G, it is going to generate your build system. And if you do LS and CD to build, you will see that we have our make files. We can say make to build. It is going to build our project or we can say CMake build and pass the location of the current build directory. It is going to build the binary and if you run, you can see it here. 
This is really all I wanted you to see in this video that you can use the GUI tools that come with CMake on Windows. It is CMake GUI on Linux. It is CC Make, and you can use them to make it explicit what the steps that CMake goes through to build your project are. We have a configuration stage, have a generation stage, and we have a build stage in which we explicitly call our build system. And now I hope you have seen these with your own eyes through CMake GUI and CCMake on Linux. I am going to stop here in this video and I will see you next time.